Welcome back to part two of this presentation on expectations of Fresno Pacific University kinesiology graduate students. In this uh, presentation, I'll spend time talking about the expectations that I have for you as a student in this program. And these things are really advice for you to be successful in this program. Um, the first two things that I want to discuss is uh, the workload that you should expect in this program and I'm doing that by hours uh, per week uh, and by the semesters. If uh, we were in a regular face-to-face -face class um, for a three unit course we would typically spend three hours in a class uh, per night. That would be uh, for a regular 16 week semester. Now some of our classes are six weeks as, and those are the summer classes. Some of our classes are eight weeks. Those would be the fall and the spring semesters. So we would actually probably spend four hours uh, a night per week in the fall and the spring semesters. Then in the summers in a face-to-face -face class we would be in class four hours two nights a week per class. So for the summer, for example, I would be eight hours a week in lecture or doing whatever in class per week. Plus you have homework and reading and all those type of things. So that's, I will say, 10 hours to 15 hours per class uh, for the summer and about five hours per class during the fall and the spring. So if you're taking two classes, you would do 10 hours in the fall and the spring or 20 hours to 30 hours in the summer. So it's kind of how where the math comes out. Um, and it's pretty close to what students have told me in the past. Another thing I want you to, to do to be successful in this program is you need to check your Fresno e Pacific email. That's the email address that's fpu.edu that each student was assigned. It's in your campus cruiser, the place where you register for classes. Um, you can forward that email to a different email address. There is a video in the Moodle training class to teach you how to forward your email, your FPU email, to somewhere else. I do that. I have it forwarded to a different email address. And so I get all my email. So I don't have to check multiple emails. Other thing is in classes, you should check the Moodle announcement form regularly. I may, me or other professors in this program uh, will post announcements. You're responsible for the information in these announcements. Uh, if we make a change in class, you'll either get that in the Moodle announcement, and you can get it in an email, or you may even get an audio announcement in a podcast. Uh, sort of like what we're doing here. So you are responsible for the information from your e from the email, from the Moodle announcements, or any audio announcements. Uh, some other expectations. Um, I know I spent a lot of time trying to provide details on the assignments. Some other professors, I assume, will be doing the same thing. Uh, I assume that you should follow all the assignment directions um, as close as possible. Uh, they're there for a particular reason. Uh, please follow the directions. If, you, if you're not sure, ask. Uh, that's a little bit later in my bullet points. Um, another thing is uh, with forms, they're also called discussion boards. I consider that class time. All the professors do consider this class time. I, I, I expect you to take the any forum or threaded discussions or discussion boards seriously. I, I expect you to provide um, good thought and writing in your posts. When you're responding to other students, you shouldn't just say things like, Oh, I like what you said. I think that's a good idea. That's not thoughtful at all. You need to read, digest it, and answer the question thoroughly 
and in depth. Um, for initial responses to post, I typically expect you to write three fully developed paragraphs. So that's about a page. Three paragraphs, fully developed paragraphs is typically a page of writing. And when you respond to your fellow classmates, I also expect you to write three fully developed paragraphs. Uh, there's a thing that you'll read about in the different syllabi that's called netiquettes. It's how you respond to other students in forums. It has to do with the way we talk to one another and treat each other in electronic discussion boards. I'll let you read that in the um, syllabi when you see those. Again, as I was saying earlier, if you have questions about assignments or got questions about classes, got questions about anything, uh, please ask. That's what we're here for. For classes, I really suggest that you use the question and answer form. Each class will have a Q&A form where you should post questions about assignments um, and any other things about the class there. I would check that forum first before you post your question because maybe somebody else has already uh, asked that question. The, the purpose of these forums is so the professor doesn't get 30 emails asking the same question. And believe me, that happens. Um, go to the Q&A forum, post your question. If it hasn't already been answered, you should get a response uh, either in a few minutes or anywhere within a day. Try to keep, I try to keep that up to date within 24 hours, and I, and I think that's true for the other uh, faculty in this program. If your question is about grades, uh, that's when you need to email your professor or call them, Skype them, um, and keep in contact with them. Some other tips for success in this program. I really suggest that you set up time in your, uh, your schedule for class. Even though th this is an online program and we don't have set times for you to have to log in and work on class stuff, it's really beneficial for you to look at your calendar, figure out when you have some time each day to uh, work on classwork. Don't wait to the last minute to do things. Uh, do a little bit per day, uh, a little bit of reading, a little bit of writing, uh, listening to podcasts and lectures or whatever the class may involve. Uh, I just, I think it will be real beneficial for you that if you put in your schedule that from, from let's say 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., that doesn't mean a time that you have to do it, but 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., I'm in class. And nothing else can block you from that unless it's an emergency. Just like if you had to go to a campus and take class, you would have to go there. I suggest you do similar things in your schedule and says, okay, I got this hour blocked that I'm in class. And be in class, don't let anything else interrupt you. That will make, make you more successful in this program if you do that. Another thing that will make you successful in this program is you don't wait to the last minute to do things. A lot of our assignments are due Sundays at midnight, Pacific Standard Time, uh, but don't wait to Sunday to do it. You will not be successful. Your work will suffer. You will not learn the material that you're trying to learn. Um, as the bullet has there, do a little at a time. Uh, this is the best way to really learn to ingest and digest and understand the material. Uh, we cover a lot of material real quick and you need to spend time thinking through it and processing it in order to learn the material. And Again, the students that wait till the last minute, their grades really suffer. They just don't learn. Other thing is check your email and announcements on a regular basis. I've mentioned this already twice. The other thing I don't think I have a bullet for, but I, I want you to set up a Skype account I have the link for that within the Moodle training class. Uh, Skype is a really uh, easy and free video uh, telephone 
Uh, you can call me. You can call other people that are on Skype. You can uh, chat with other people. You can do video calls with other people. And it's all free. That's what's even better about it. So please set up a Skype account. We do a lot of writing in this program. And I do expect you to write scholarly, which means academically or academic writing. Um, just so you know, we have adopted the American Psychological Association writing style. Uh, in the textbook information, I told you you need to buy uh, APA software uh, program. Um, I have a link for those software programs in the Moodle training class. Uh, there's one either for if you're a PC person or if you use a Mac. I expect you to uh, use that. I expect you to learn APA. I expect you to use the APA style guide that you um, were to buy, the sixth edition of the APA. The things that I'm really, I guess the term is anal, about is uh, three main things is in text, in a text, referencing, citations, and heading format. Again, the APA software and style guide will give you information on, on that stuff. So I expect you to learn that. The other thing with writing, um, you are not the expert. You have to cite all your references, all your resources. That's within the paper. That's called in-text referencing and also in the reference page or the end of text referencing or citations. Um, again, you're not the expert. The only time that you can write in your opinion is if you've been asked to describe your opinion or to write, um, write a um, reflection paper on what you've done in the past and what you can do in the future uh, or a personal application of material. But if you're writing a research paper, which are many of the papers that we write in this program, you need to cite all your references. If you provide information, I expect to see a reference behind it or within your paper. The other thing is you have to use good resources. What are good resources? Well, let's take a look here. I have a rank order of good resources here. Um, your best ones are called peer-reviewed journal articles. These are like the Journal of Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance, or Journal of Athletic Training. Typically, it will say Journal of something, and those are typically good journal articles. They're research-based articles. They're peer-reviewed, which means other experts in the area have reviewed to make sure that the material is correct and there's um, the research and the the findings and the conclusions that their authors made is correct. Other resources are textbooks and I want you to use the most current edition of the textbook. Uh, the other thing is professional organizational material for example um, the National Association of Physical Education and Dance. No, National Association of Sport and Physical Education, NASB, has material on their website. You can use that material from the national organization or on their professional organizational website. In athletic training, that would be in the National Athletic Trainers Association website or many associations like that. Maybe you went to a professional conference or a symposia and you uh, went to a workshop. Uh, there's typically abstracts associated with that. Those are good resources. Other resources are professional video DVDs or CDs uh, that are training type things. You can do professional interviews with experts in the field. And the list goes on. Now, no Wikipedia. Wikipedia is unacceptable. I will never accept Wikipedia as a reference in this program. If I see it, you know, get it lined out on your paper. And most uh, non-professional websites are unacceptable. Typically, websites are unacceptable because there are people's opinions and they are not 
to be used. People's blogs, people's uh, Facebook pages, and so forth and so on. If you're unsure, please just ask, because I'll give you my opinion, if it's a good resource or not. Some other writing stuff that uh, every single paper that you turn in in, in this uh, program should have, and every paper that you turn in should have a title page. Your title page should give the paper title, uh, it, it should give your name, it should give the class title uh, name, it should give your professor's name, it should give the, uh, again, the assignment title, or to give the paper title, uh, the date that it's been turned in or is due. So again, you should have a title page, have your name on it, have the class name on it, have the professor's name on it, have the date that you turned it in, and have uh, give the paper some kind of title. All papers that are longer than one page, you should use uh, a page. You should use page numbers. You should use the insert page number tool within your uh, Word document um, or your word processing uh, software has that. You should typically write all your papers in the third person unless asked to apply the information then you use first person. Now you're all graduate students. I expect you to know what third person is and what first person is at this point. Um, third person is you take yourself completely out of the paper. You use no personal pronouns in the paper. Uh, you don't use pronouns like I, we, us, so forth. That's using first person. Anytime you say I, we, us, that's first person. Do not use first person. Write in a third person. Never, never, never use you or your in your paper. That's horrible writing. Never use you or your in your paper. The uh, other thing is when you write your papers, use past tense. Because uh, pretty much everything that you're writing has happened in the past, so you should use past tense verb tense. Uh, then when you're discussing events that will happen in the future, then use a future, attempt, future verb tense. Again, you're a graduate student, so I expect you to know what all this stuff means. Other writing stuff is your paper formatting. It should be one-inch margins on the top, bottom, left, and right margins. Uh, typically, you should use 12-point fonts, either Arial or Times New Roman font. Um, some other APA anal stuff is words for zero to numbers 10, and then you want to use numbers for numbers that are greater than the number 10. Uh, one other thing is that I have made a video about uh, a thing that uh, Microsoft Word version 2007 did on paragraph spacing. Uh, please watch that video and make sure that your paragraph spacing is not messed up. I don't know why Microsoft did that. It's just annoying to me. So please fix that on your... Uh, if you're using Microsoft Word 2007. Uh, please spell check and grammar check. Um, you should be able to see those little squiggly lines underneath your words. <laughs> please just spell check and grammar check. Um, again, we've talked about netiquette already. Um, all this spelling, grammar, all those type of things are also in effect for forum and discussion boards. When you write a paper, you should have an introduction, body, and conclusion. That's including within a paragraph. You should have a thesis statement or an introductory statement. You should provide support for your introduction statement, and you should provide a concluding sentence. And for your papers, you should have an introduction, tell them what you're going to tell them, a body, tell them, and then a conclusion, tell them what you just told them. That's good writing. Tell them what you what you're going to tell them in an introduction, tell them, that's the body of the paper, and 
tell them what you just told them that's a conclusion you should have that in each paragraph and you should have that in each paper that you write introduction body and conclusion uh, just so you know that every class that we have has what we call signature assignments these are like the big assignments that will assess your learning to make sure that number one you are learning our course desired student outcomes then also our program desired student outcomes which we've talked about a little bit and also our university student outcomes um, I would suggest that you hold on to each one of these assignments uh, because I think they're going to show up again later in the program <laughs> in fact I know they will uh, you'll need to hold on to all your signature assignments uh, they are critical assignments they're the key assignments uh, that will make sure that you are a, a successful kinesiology practitioner and that uh, we can prove that you are actually meeting these uh, program desired student outcomes through these signature assignments. Again, if you got any questions about anything, please uh, email me, call me, Skype me. I'm here to help you on the program level and also in the classes that I teach with you. And if you have any issues, uh, please uh, let me know. I'm here to help. Um, I'm trying to make this the best learning experience that you can possibly have while you're here with us. And I look forward to working with each of you in uh, various classes and just during the time that you're here.